What's going on everybody? Aragon here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Tick or the Imperial Inquisition channel. We have a lot to talk about today and I am super excited to share with you guys our tips and tricks for farming and earning precious astral diamonds. Thank you Smeagol. Appreciate the reinforcement there buddy. So, as I said, we have a lot to talk about and we have a couple, we brought this down into two main sections. The first section is we're going to talk about guild marks and some tips and tricks we have learned or kind of come up with to help bring in more guild marks on a regular basis. Unfortunately, there's no good way to farm left and right, you know, a bunch of guild marks, but there are things you can do that we will help you with, give some pointers that will help you bring in more of them, uh, which will tie right into one of our uh, main, actual, one of our main, uh, astral diamond farming techniques that we'll talk about later in the video. I do apologize. So we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot of sections. I'm not able to put links up here in the video next to me, whereas you can just click on them and go to each section. I haven't got to that point in my awesome professional filmography experience yet. I am not even an intermediate. I'm barely even an amateur at this. So, and I apologize again if I keep looking off to the side here. My notes are over here. I want to get a teleprompter, but Alondria said, no way! But I'm really good at turning that no into a yes. I'm going to see if I can't work my magic on her. As you can see, she's not here right now, so keep that between you and me. Wink. <laughs> so, what I will do, since I can't make the links, is I will put, as we, as we cover each section or talk about what we're going to talk about, I'll post over here at what point in the video uh, that section starts at. So you can drag this little bar down here, or it might be over here by now. And then bring it to whatever section of the video you want to, trying to you know, dial it into the right timestamp. Again, apologize. I am working on figuring out how to put embedded links um, on this video for uh, future videos to come. So, again, we're talking about two main sections. The first is guild marks, and the second is farming and making, or sorry, farming and earning astral diamonds. We can't really make them. I wish we could. So, in the guild marks, we're going to talk about. The Siege of Neverwinter, I know we talk about it a lot, but it's actually a pretty good spot to bring in some guild marks if that's what you're looking to do. So the Siege of Neverwinter will be the first section we're going to talk about. Actually, a laundry is going to cover that. Um, after that, we're going to talk about utility enchantments and how those can play into guild marks for you. And then followed by surplus equipment. After those three sections are covered, we're going to roll right into the topics on farming and earning astral diamonds. Uh, from We're going to talk about uh, playing the uh, or sorry, playing the Zen Exchange. We're going to talk about playing the Auction House, farming lanolin. I might sound like a foreign term to you, but we will cover it and we'll take it from you know the ground up. We'll explain everything to help you guys out. Um, farming Mastercraft resources. That is our primary uh, income right now for Astral Diamonds. Again, thank you to Ozymex for bringing that to light. Hopefully we can spread the word and a lot of people can take advantage of this. Um, we're going to look at the VIP lockbox key that you get, the enchanted key you get per day from VIP rank 1. We're going to look at your invoking bonus, how that ties into everything for, for some side Astral Diamonds. We're going to look at the daily dungeons and skirmishes as well. I think followed by talking about the, the two different seals, the seals of the protector and the seals of the element, I believe they're called. Uh, we're going to see how you can get astral diamonds out of that as well. Uh, and we're going to end it with talking about um, items you can make in your professions that you can basically make them, flip them onto the auction house and make uh, a quick buck off of those as well. So again, we have a lot to talk about. Super excited to bring this video to you guys. We've had a lot of members asking about it, you know, asking for help how to make astral diamonds and it is my pleasure and a laundry's pleasure to share this info with you guys. So without further ado, let's head on over to Alondria, who's going to talk about the Siege of Neverwinter. Uh, what's up guys, it's Alondria. Um, the Siege of Neverwinter is coming up and we're really excited about it. Uh, go check your game calendar by pressing L. Uh, if this is your first time doing this siege event, make sure you check in with the Master of Coin. Uh, she's at the Guild Hall. Get the quest that's needed for this Siege of Vouchers to drop. Um, afterwards, go ahead and head over to the uh, Siege Battlefield 
um, and beginning begin farming your siege vouchers uh, for the guild. Uh, the average rate that we've found the vouchers will drop is one in every two minutes and it can take up to 20 minutes uh, for your first drop of the day. So 99 vouchers will equal between 5 and 10,000 guild marks. Additional guild marks can be earned while you, if you utilize uh, your utility slot or enchantments, sorry, <laughs> your utility enchantments. So let's go ahead and move on to our next segment where Aragon will um, talk about, talk further about your utility enchantments. Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about utility enchantments and how they can work for you passively, meaning you don't have to do anything to get the bonuses they can offer you. There are three main types of utility enchantments that give us the bonus we're looking for, or that just give us a bonus in general. The first one is Dragon Horde enchantments, which upon killing an enemy gives you a chance to get a refinement item of some sorts. Those are great if you're working on leveling up and need refining items, those will add up over time. Believe me, a laundry and myself use those for a long time. Once you get to a certain level, or you know, item level, other enchantments to start looking at, or even as you're um, ranking up, are the Fey Blessings and the Quartermasters. The Fey Blessings, and we'll take a look at one of them over here. Um, on killing an enemy, you have a X percent chance that a, a will o wisp will find an enchantment for you. These are usually rank 5 enchantments, and these do scale by zone. So if you're in like a, a rank 60 zone, like the Siege of Neverwinter, they'll be rank 4 enchantments. Having multiple copies of phase will increase your percent chance. They do not have to be the same rank to get the stack bonus. It could be, you know, rank, you can have a rank 8 and a rank 7 and a rank 9. It doesn't matter. The same concept applies to the Quartermasters. On the Quartermasters, and we'll go take a look at one over here. Upon killing an enemy, you have an X percent chance that you will find a bag of goods. These bags of goods will be put directly in your inventory. And that is the biggest difference right there between the Quartermaster and the Phase. Well, besides the type of item you get, is the Phase, when they proc, the enchantment will be on the ground that you have to pick up. The quartermasters will put it directly in your inventory, along with, and same with the um, the dragon horde enchantments. So, little kind of fun fact there. Go back to the quartermaster though. These bags of goods do can do two things for us. One, we can put them straight in the guild coffer for surplus equipment. Or two, we can open them and get um, an enchantment and some miscellaneous gear, such as uh, health kits, health potions, random potions, and uh, profession resources. The theory out there is if you have 11% or more of quartermasters, you'll start getting the rank 7 enchantments. I gotta say that's not true. I spent the 80 to prove that myth. I had 11.5% and I only got rank 6s. So the rank 7s are gonna be on the upper tier of your quartermasters. One thing to note about all the enchantments, the dragons, the phase, and the quartermasters, is they all have a 30 second in, you know, internal cooldown timer, meaning when they proc, or if you get an item from one of those enchantments, it will not happen again for at least 30 seconds. The other thing to be kind of cautious of, or not cautious to be aware of, is they do have a diminishing return per day, meaning it can only proc so many times in such a you know, in such a time frame, and after that, it will start kind of degrading until the next day where it resets. I am still working to figure out what this time frame is and when you can start to see those diminishing returns. So, it's never, not say it's not a bad idea, a better way to utilize your utility enchantments would be to have an offset, have a couple quartermasters, have a couple phase, and possibly like a dragon horde um, enchantment. Uh, one thing I personally run with, I um, currently have two Quartermaster Rank 12s and two Fae Blessing Rank 12s, and I actually am selling my third Fae to put another Quartermaster on here. How this pertains to guild marks is, 
just what they drop. You put in the guild coffer, you get guild marks for them. The phase drop enchantments. And this is kind of the, the, the tough decision to make, because if you're working on leveling up, you need enchantments. You need a lot of enchantments to level up with. Uh, they're your main feeder item into artifacts, and there's actually have a segment on uh, how to refine your artifacts and mythic for the, the kind of best practices for that. You might want to go check that out. It's on our Twitch account, and I'll put the link uh, in this video. The other one, though, is the Quartermasters. Those are items you really don't need, and they can be donated for uh, surplus equipment we talked about, giving a decent amount of guild marks. If I can get over the, the lip there, we'll go see kind of what the ratio is. And there are different, different tier or different level bags you can get. Um, now, so let's see what we have. So I only have, I got three spoils of war, which are worth 350 surplus a piece. And we also have uh, an abandoned gear. And there's one other one, but I don't think we have any of them. It is, and I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's a, it's a blue one though. So just know it's blue something. <laughs> So if we put the Spoils of War, and this is the primary one you'll get running the, the level 70 areas or higher. So just three bags is giving me 210 guild marks. That is it. I mean, that's great for the guild marks, but three bags? Are you kidding me? That comes so quickly if you have these equipped and you're running around doing your daily quests and you know, farming areas, or if you're in the Siege of Neverwinter and you're just you know, killing guys. These are free... This is, these are free guild marks. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to spend any extra time. So I would highly recommend getting Quartermaster enchantments put on your character and get them working for you now. In fact, I'm going to put a couple of these in the guild coffer as we speak. So that was the highest tier bag that I have seen so far. It's the one that's worth 350 surplus. Uh, the Bandit Gear is only worth 150, but still 30 guild marks. So right there, we just made, what did we just make? About 240 guild marks. And all I did to get that was in an earlier video, I went out and completed um, three heroic events on the guild map. So not bad. So great way to get uh, guild marks on that one. So again, get those on there. If you need help getting some quartermasters and getting you started, please feel free to talk to me or you know, put some... I'd say put a comment in the notes below, but be faster a response from me if you just you know mailed me or private message me in game. I might be able to if I'm able to help you out. I will. Um, I'll always help out whenever whenever we can. Same with Alondria. So that is it for the utility enchantments. Get those working for you. Let's move over and start talking about shards of power. Hey everybody. In this section, we're going to talk about um, shards of power. So shards of power are gained by doing quests in the stronghold. And as you can see here, we're already in the stronghold. And let's go get some of these quests and take a look at them. Go talk to the builder. Let's go challenge someone. And problem with the beast. There's one. So we got 10 heroic shards of power right there. Let's go over to the Master of Coin. Dread Ring supports. We're going to do three quests in the Dread Ring. And we get 10 Adventurer Shards of Power from that. And let's go over to the Ranger. And Defending the Stronghold. Complete three Heroic Encounters. And 10 more Adventurer Shards of Power. So I'm going to take that one. So what I'm going to do. As you saw there, I have to go complete three heroic events on the Stronghold map. I'm going to pause this video real fast to make kind of a time lapse so you don't have to sit there and watch me go do all three of those heroics. Uh, when, I, when we come back, I'll shut the video up again. We'll look at what we're going to do with those Shards of Power. As you can probably already guess, we're going to turn those into the, to the coffer. But I want to show you what the Guildmark uh, payout is. So let me go do this real fast, and I'll be right back to you. Okay, we're back. What seemed like a short break for you was actually about a, a 10 minute break for me. So I went through and completed three heroics in the Stronghold map, and I also defeated the Stormcaller. As you can see here, we have a couple quests to turn in. So let's go turn those in, get our Shards of Power out of that. And 10 heroic Shards of Power. Followed by 
some adventure shards of power. From there, we'll take those up to the stronghold coffer. And this is what I want to show you. I, I could tell you what it is, but I like to show, honestly. So, as you see here, we have contribute now to the heroic shards and adventure shards. We turn our 10, we get 100 coffer gain. So, 10 shards equals 100 guild marks. I think I said that backwards. This is a 10 coffer gain for 100 guild marks. So, as you can see here, it's a 10 to 1 ratio, whereas it's 10 guild marks for every one shard of power you turn in. So, this one, we should get 100 guild marks for that one. And that is a good way, on a kind of a daily basis, to get uh, a, a steady amount of guild marks. You can get you know a few hundred a day just by doing that. Combine that with some of the other uh, ideas and tips and tricks we're showing you, or you know, you know, talking about, and you can be bringing in you know close to a thousand plus guild marks per day. So that is you know the, the down and dirty, very simple, very straightforward how the shards of power work, where to get them from. Um, from there, so there's only three places you can really get them. You can get them by doing the daily quests on the guild. You can get them under the auction house, under the uh, stronghold section, right here, the stronghold chests of power. These chests of power give you, as you can see right here, 100 shards of power of each type. So right there you're looking at about 4,000 guild marks. Again, that does cost Zen. And so I don't recommend going that route unless it's on a sale. There are a few sales in Neverwinter from the Zen store. The entire Zen store is 40% off and half and 50% off throughout the year. And we can talk about that when they get closer to those days. The other place to get them from is the auction house. Uh, type it in here, stronghold, chest of power. But well, you can see they do run for about 150,000 astral diamonds, which is a little expensive. It kind of defeats the purpose of trying to farm and, you know, earn astral diamonds. You only want to spend this much to make, you know, only 4,000 diamonds. Or, sorry, 4,000 guild marks. So, I just want to show you where else you can get these from. Uh, another place in the guild map you can get them from is by doing the T3 heroics which you look at the guild map, the T3s are the bigger ones. Doing your first T3 of the day will grant you, I believe it's 10 heroic shards of power. So just an extra little bonus. So that is it for guild mark, or for, oh, I'm sorry, not for guild marks. That is it for the shards of power. Hey everybody. In this section, we're going to be talking about influence, which will be the last section we talk about for the guild mark tips and tricks before we move on to the Ashel Diamond or Ashel Diamond uh, farming section. So, influence is one of the primary resources we need in the guild in order to upgrade our boon structures and our guild rank. It is one of the hardest ones to get because you can only get so much per day per character. The max you can get is 400 influence per day by running five heroic encounters on the stronghold map. That's just from the heroic encounters. You can still get some more influence by doing the quests given out at each of the boon structures. Check your map to see where they're located and I can show you real fast here. Here we are in the, in the guild hall. Now we have a boon structure over here in the stable and another one down south called, uh, called the Barracks. So they give about 90 influence total up to you, but that's just another option you know, to get more influence. Another way to get influence is out of the strong box of influence, which is a random reward given from Dragonflight event. Some of you might be asking, what's a Dragonflight event? It is an event that is hosted every two hours on the guild map we may not run it every two hours, but we have the option to run it every two hours uh, without, uh, for free without having to buy what's called Golden Bells, which do cost Zen. If we take a look at the calendar, uh, we can see it on the hourly breakdown. Um, the next, well, this is, you can see what time it's getting here. It's a little bit late. Um, so if you come up here to 
the traveling wizard. Wow, sorry, I completely spaced out. I was looking for the dragonfly. I am exhausted. A laundry of myself I've been making these videos for the past seven hours. Um, so the event's called the traveling wizard. It happens every two hours. Uh, so we spawn the dragons and they come down. At the end of the dragon flight, so you have a chance to get the strong box of influence, which gives 2,000 influence if you open the box. If you get that box, I will give you a strong box key to open it because one, it helps the guild out, and two, it helps you out by giving you guild marks. So if you get one, please let me know so I can get you the, um, the key. Other options to get uh, influence vouchers is if we go to the auction house and just type in major influence or major if inf. <laughs> you can see that how I got a I got what's called a it's not called anything but I call it the auction house bug. I know this will come up with a return, but it's not giving me anything. When you log into the game for the first time, at least on Steam or at least on my system, and I open the auction house for the first time, I don't get any any results. I have to close the auction house and come right back into it. And you can see my search bar is a little bit different. And then I'll get my results. So you can buy them off here. I tend to do this if I if I miss a day for influence. This is kind of my punishment to myself. It's like, ah, oh, you miss a day? Well, guess what? You have to go spend some AD to make up for it. That's my punishment to myself. I don't recommend doing that because it can get expensive. <laughs> so Again, influence is a kind of a, a steady way to bring in guild marks. A new way to get influence that just came out with the last uh, mod release is doing the Stronghold Marauders event on the guild map once a week with each character. Um, it rewards 600 influence once a week per character, like I just said. Uh, we, we tend to host that probably about four, maybe five times a week to get people, the, you know, a few chances to try and make it there if they have alternate, you know, alternate characters or accounts that come out and get more influence that way. So another good way to make uh, some guild marks there. In a given week, you can easily pull in uh, roughly, you know, 3,000, you know, plus guild marks just by doing influence daily. So that's it for influence. Really straightforward, really simple. Again, if you have questions on how to get influence, we have a guide on our website, which I'll link um, at the bottom of the video here. So go check that out. And if you have not signed up on our website, it will you will need to do so in order to get access to all of our guides because, well, we don't want to share this with the whole world. <laughs> Laundry and myself work very hard to bring these guides. Um, actually, Laundry and myself and a few of the guild members have worked very hard to bring these guides to, uh, to you all. So again, Thanks for listening to this, and let's get on to uh, the Astral Diamond Farming. We'll be talking about the playing the Zen Exchange first. All right, everybody. In this section, we're going to talk about how to play the Zen Exchange. It's going to be a short topic. There's not a lot to it. As you can see here, I'm already in the game. So, in order to play the Zen Exchange, you will need some Astral Diamonds to start with. The more you have, of course, the better off and the faster you're going to get um, Astral Diamonds in the end. But you can always build up to that point. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open the Zen Exchange. And one thing to point out is we're making this video, or I'm making this video right before Cryptic is going to have their 40% uh, off the entire Zen store. Whenever they have a big sale, usually about the month, the two months prior to that, it is impossible to play the Zen store because as you can see here, people are trying to buy roughly 2 million Zen at the max price of 500 Astral Diamonds apiece. Well, when this happens, we can't really play the Zen store or the Zen exchange. So this option becomes kind of uh, null and void for us for the time being until after the sale is over. But at least kind of go through the motions of what we would do if it, there was no sale coming up. So let's say there's no sale and I have some 80 to spend. I got, you know, we'll, we'll just take my 500,000 80 right there. So I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to buy, uh, let's see, I'm going to say, let's do, I want 500 Zen for 494. Okay, so I'm going to spend 247,000 80 
Well, I could double that, I think. Let's go up to a thousand. Oh, definitely. I definitely, so that's under my 500,000 mark. Of course, the simple math would tell us, you know, just add a couple zeros to the 494. So what I would do is I would post this, and we can do it because this won't go through. So we'll post that, come back to our listings, and you can see I want to buy a thousand zen at 494 astral diamonds, spending just shy of half a million. Okay, so for argument's sake, let's say this sold, and I got my, or this, this transaction went through, and I got my zen. I would then take it to sell zen. Now I'm going to sell off my 1,000 zen, and I'm going to sell it for, let's do like 498, for example. I'm going to make 4,080 profit. Not a lot, but when the Zins exchange fluctuates enough in one day, you can pull in about, it really ranges how much you how, you, how much you bring in, depending how, how much time you want to spend on the exchange. I've brought in around between five uh, between 50,000 and 100,000 AD in uh, a day doing this. But then again, it's all based on time, based on the market. I've brought in 20,080 over the course of a week. So it really depends. But this is free AD, there's no 10% on the front or the back end of this. So as you're running around, just stop by, check the Zen Exchange, see if uh, see what the numbers are. I believe the lowest you can buy for is 494, and the max you can, and it's the range, I should, I should say the, the range is 494 to 500, so you'll never get anything for 493. Um, you used to. I'll be able to do that, and maybe every now and then. But history is the last six months have been showing 494 to 500. So that's all we're doing for the Zen Exchange, applying the Zen Exchange. We're buying low and we're selling high. You know, once you start getting more AD um, put into this, you can start coming in here to say, you know, I want to buy 5,000, which is the max uh, Zen you can buy for 494 AD. And then I'm going to sell it off for you know 500. You're going to start pulling in some uh, some okay numbers. You can have up to five transactions at one time, so five you know listings at once. Just a heads up. So give this a shot. If you have some some AD to play with, try this out. Do some uh, Zen exchange. Let me know. You know, post in the video comments uh, how this worked out for you or, or any of the uh, options in this video. Thanks for tuning in, and let's move on to the next section. Hey everybody, in this section, we're going to be talking about how to play the auction house and how to make astral diamonds from it. This is going to be a pretty short section as well. It's a pretty straightforward objective. We want to play the auction house. We want to buy items for a low cost and sell them for an astronomical price. Well, it won't be astronomical, but it'll be a higher price than you buy it for. As you progress through the game and you get more into the refining, uh, the refinement to get your artifacts up, to get your gear up, to get your item level increased, you're gonna find that there are certain items you're gonna need more than others. These are the items that we're looking for in the auction house to buy when they're cheap and sell when, they're, um, when the prices are skyrocketed. The prices will skyrocket during the double refinement. So I'm going to show you some of the or some of the items that I look at, and actually these are really the only items I tend to look at in the auction house that I have seen fluctuate the most. Again, there's only a few of them that I've caught so far. So if you have or find any other ones that you want to share with anybody, please post them in the video comments below or use our guild website on our open forum. Say, hey, I found this, Aragon's a dumbass, and you forgot to say this. <laughs> so, let's go into the auction house. Let's go under uh, equipment, under artifacts, and we're going to type in the word cat. And I'm not looking for a live cat here. I am actually looking for Aurora's Whole Realms catalog. This is one of my personal favorite um, items in the auction house to play with. Because one, there is a bunch of them. Well, you see there's 43 here, which is actually a bunch of artifacts for this particular type. And the price is low. This is actually the cheapest artifact of stability you can buy. And if you're not entirely sure how this ties into double refinement, go check out 
my, my video on our on my Twitch account. The link is um, at the bottom of the screen now, or should be right about now, to see how these feed in and why these are so important. The concept is, in each category, the, the Artifact Disability, Artifact of Union, and Artifact of Power, there is a course going to be the cheapest artifact in each category. You take these feeder, we call them feeder artifacts, and refine them into your main artifact, giving you a huge um, refinement point boost off of it. It's actually worth 10 times the refinement points during double refinement. A little backstory, again, check the video out on my Twitch account to, to see how exactly this works. So this particular artifact, as you can see right now, it's 23,080. During the last double refinement, uh, probably actually about uh, three months ago, I believe, this artifact, same quality type, was 220,000 Astro Diamonds. I saw this and I could not believe it. I could not believe it even further when I actually had to buy a couple of them for another experiment I was running. Talk about, oh, <laughs> that, was a, that was a tough purchase. About a week after the double refinement ended, these dropped in price down to 10,000 Astro Diamonds apiece. Mere pocket change. So I saw that price, I started scooping these off the market. Again, I'm not trying to put all my eggs in one basket here, but I wanted to see, you know, for the next double refinement, I wanted to have an additional income. So I bought about 10 to 20 of these just to have my in my bank or in my, in my inventory, in my mailbox, so that when it happens again, if it's, it does skyrocket again, I have, you know, I'm gonna make, you know, about a million to two million astral diamonds off of the, the amount of catalogs I purchased. So this is one of my personal favorite ones to look at. Um, since we're here, I'll show you the other two artifacts that are the cheapest in each category. You have the Lantern, which is the cheapest artifact of power, going for 60,000 Astro Diamonds at the making of this video. This one also goes up to about the 250,000 um, AD range during double refinement. Again, that's not guaranteed. The market does fluctuate. So at the time of this, uh, the, the time of this movie or this video we're putting together this is what we've seen in the very recent past and are right now we're on the same prediction for the upcoming double refinement so just kind of you know watch the prices you'll start to feel and understand what the price ranges are as time goes on as you get a little more experience uh, shopping the auction house here again so the lantern is for the artifacts of power um, for the water um, the water for the artifact of union it is the waters of elizad which are running for about 25000 This is my least favorite of the three. I, I don't know why, but the artifacts of uh, Union do not seem to fluctuate in price a whole heck of a lot. So, you know, 25000 80 you might buy a couple. You know, who knows? It might go up a lot. You might make some 80 off of that. I typically stay more towards the stability side because that has the biggest price for, um, price difference as far as how low I can buy it versus how high I can sell it for. So again, these are my, well, three of the items I watch are typically the stability one and the power one are my two favorite that I, I pick off the market every now and then when I have a, some spare astral diamonds laying around. Uh, the next item is under refinement. And we're gonna type in, uh, let's we'll do dark enchantments. Let's see, rank. Five. I think I spelled that wrong. Did I spell that wrong? Okay, I took a quick pause to figure that out so I didn't waste your guys' time. This is actually not an S. It's Dark Enchantment, rank five, not plural. Again, sorry about the, the little hiccup in the video there. So what we're looking for on these rank fives, and I only shop the four main types. You have your darks, your silveries, radiance, and azures. And I only do the rank five enchantments because these are typically the most common item that you're gonna to use to refine into your feeder artifacts and into your well, main artifacts as well. And when you start refining them, again, check the video out on Twitch to see how this works together uh, to make the most, to get the most bang for your buck for refinement. So what I'm looking for are stacks of 99 enchantments. And we have one right here, one up here actually as well, for 30,000 astral diamonds. I've been uh, shopping the auction house long enough to know what the range is for these. They range, again, this is within the past year. Uh, the lowest I've seen these is about 17,000 astral diamonds for a stack of 99. And on the high side, 
I've seen them go for about 55,000, although they typically bounce right around from 22,000 to 35,000 in the last uh, few months and are doing so right now. So not the quickest way to make a lot of AD, but these do fluctuate quick enough where if you bought, let's say for example, you buy 10 stacks at you know, 18,000 a piece, that's 180,000 Astral Diamonds. You sell them off at 30,000 or 31,000 Astral Diamonds, they will go quick. I can promise you that. They will go quick and you'll get a quick buck out of it. So it takes a little more managing, but this is another, you know, a pretty sure way that I have found to make Astral Diamonds. Again, I'm sure there's other items on the ast on the auction house that you know follow the same concept. You know, buy low, sell high. Items that you're looking for items that are highly sought after that tend to fluctuate in prices a lot. It might take some studying to see what the low high, the low prices and the higher prices are on particular items because you don't want to be caught buying at the high side and then have it drop and never come back up to your buying per or your buying price. Then you're kind of doing the opposite of what the this video is about of making 80. You're gonna be losing it at that point. So again, if you find other items, please post it. You know, I'd love to share with other get out there to the, our guild, our guild members. Uh, post it on uh, either you can private message me or email me, or you post it on the um, our website forums as well. That is it for this section. Actually, so not quite as short, but I want to make sure it's thorough enough um, to help walk you guys through this. Coming up next, we're going to be looking at how to farm lanolin. Okay, as our last section dictated, we're going to be talking about how to farm lanolin. Better yet, what the hell is lanolin, you might be asking. Well, let me show you what lanolin is. Let's go back to our trusty auction house and type in lanolin. Lanolin is, an, is used for the restoration process for the sea moving ice weapons and armor for the Storm King's Thunder. Um, if you don't know what that is, you can open up your collections page by pressing Control J and scrolling down to the Storm King Thunder. As you can see here, we have uh, the relic set, we have relic armor, and these are what Lanolin's mainly used for is to restore these guys, along with some other resources. So, very highly sought after, as right now, as it sits this making this video, this is some of the higher level or highest uh, gear you can get in the game, with a couple of exceptions on some other, I don't say hidden items, but some other armor. So, again, highly sought after, very much needed. To give you an idea, to restore both the weapons for the Sea Moving Ice, I needed, I think it was 25 lanolin a piece, so 50 lanolin total. I might be off on that one, so. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but it's still at least 50. So as you can see, one lanolin goes for 19,000 Astro Diamonds, and this price has been pretty solid since the Sea of Moving Ice or the Storm King's Thunder mod came out, uh, what, roughly about six months ago, we'll call it. So a pretty reliable way to get AD. The downside is getting it. It is time consuming, not gonna lie. So I hope you have a couple screens for your computer so you can pull up Netflix on one side while you farm this, <laughs> cause you're gonna need it. So I don't know if we'll be able to actually farm it tonight, or I'm making this video at night as I just kind of gave away, but I'm gonna show you what it's gonna take and how to get into a Lanolin party or a farm party. And yes, there are farms out there that run just for this. Lanolin is obtained on only two portions of the world. So let's go to our world map. Open your VIP. You got it? Great. Just kidding. If you don't have VIP yet, I highly recommend uh, getting VIP, especially for this travel post. So we're going to go to Icewind Dale. And the two places Lanolin come from are Bryn Shandar and Lonelywood. I, I take that back. There's three. The Sea Moving Ice is one of them, but the farming of Sea Moving Ice is not as efficient, and you will not find farms as fast as you'll find them in Bryn or in Lonelywood. If I had to pick between Bryn and Lonelywood, I would go with Bryn if I did not have um, the Storm King Thunder boots. 
the boots only drop from the big heroic events or BHEs, as you've probably seen it called in, in chat. They only drop from BHEs in Bryn. Lonelywood, Lonelywood does not drop any additional resources for you. So we're going to take Bryn as our example. So let's travel to Bryn Shandar. And as you probably are kind of putting this together, you need to go through the Storm King's Thunder campaign in order to get these areas unlocked. So that's the other thing to land on. Um, out of all of our uh, segments we're putting together here, Lanolin requires the highest, uh, basically, advancement of your character as far as you know, being level 70. You will need to have some okay gear on you, and you'll have to be going through the campaigns to get these areas unlocked. So we're in Bryn Shandar, as you can see, and what we're going to do is we're going to go into Zone Chat, and I'm going to type in here anything, so basically any BHE farms, and simply wait for a response. So while I'm waiting for a response, I'm going to pause this video to kind of save time on your guys' part, and I will unpause it if somebody responds. Okay, we waited for a little bit, did not get a response, except for this other um, person in his own chat looking for a BHE. Again, I'm not trying to assume anyone, you know, people know exactly what we're talking about here, so I'm going to explain everything that I see that might have some questions. The plus sign means they want to be added for that particular um, event or activity, so they want to be added for the BHEs or the big heroic events. Now, for the sake of this video, let's say there is a BHE farm. You might see someone um, respond, and it might say something like this, BHE farm in seven. That number you're gonna see is what map instance that farm is running on. So if we come under our map by pressing M, go to change instance, we can look, and in my example, I gave number seven doesn't exist right now, but we can see what instance they're talking about and transfer it over to that instance as long as there's room. This kind of explains why no one responded to what I, what I posted, because right now we only have, what, just over 30 people in the entire Bryn Shandor area, which is not, you're really not going to have enough. A, a good BIG farm has a solid, you know, 15 plus members at one time. The odds of getting 15 members out of this group right here is very slim. But for argument's sake and for this video's sake, let's say we did find a BIG farm going on. What we're going to do, hence the name, is we're gonna be running down to these big heroic events. There are three that spawn on each map, only one at a time. And we're gonna have this big group with us. We're gonna run down here, we're gonna take out this BHE, and that is it. We're gonna complete the heroic, press Control F to collect your rewards, and hope you get lanolin out of it. We ran it for quite a while to figure out the average drop rate was. And if you're super lucky, you might get it more than this. I have terrible luck. And I have found the drop rate, rate to be roughly one in six heroics. Each heroic takes approximately five to 10 minutes to complete. So in about an hour, you're gonna be pulling in maybe a, you know about three lanolins, so about 60, call it 60,000 astrodiamonds per hour. So, not a lot of Astro Diamonds within an hour, but still a pretty solid way to get some. Again, if you're looking for the boots from the um, uh, from the campaign, this is where you're going to do it from. So that is how big heroic farming works, or lanolin farming uh, works. Now one thing that lanolin can also be used for, and we're going to talk about this in a segment farther down in this video series, is Lanolin plays right into our profession items that we're gonna that we can make to flip on the auction house for more profit than if we sold lanolin directly. So take a look at the profession item section to see what we're gonna be doing. And stay tuned for the next section, which is gonna be talking about the Mastercraft resources. In this segment, we're going to be talking about Mastercraft resource farming. So, 
the prerequisite to this is you need guild marks. You need about you need at least fifteen hundred guild marks. You got them? Good. So you can see here we're at the guild. We're gonna come up to the general store, and we're gonna go over to scrolls, and we're gonna be purchasing the explorer's case for Skyhold. And we're just gonna get one for now. Now nah, we'll get a couple. You know what? We'll just spend all of our guild marks on these. Okay. So, with our Skyhold charts, hence the name, we need to go to Pirate Skyhold. So let's head over there. So now that we're in Pirate Skyhold, let's open up one of the charts and accept the quest. So what we're looking for here is that there's going to be six locations on this map that we have to go and farm these resources out of. So these are the three resources we can get, and they're all worth AD and quite a bit, but the main one we're looking for is the lacquer branches, however you want to pronounce that. The lacquer branches, they are varying in price a little bit, but typically they're staying you know, right around you know, almost half a million for you know 50 of them. So just shy, we're just shy of 10,000 AD a piece right now. These pluches, these uh, these prices do fluctuate all the way from 7,000 to 12,000, just depending. Right now, this is our primary way of pulling in all this AD we've been we've been getting in the last you know few weeks. I've pulled in multiple millions of AD just from farming. Uh, this area. So, just to give you a, uh, a glimpse of what it looks like, what we're going to do, we're just going to go to one of the six areas so you can kind of see, you know, firsthand what, what we're doing. If we open our map up, we now have these six uh, diamonds. And these never change, which is really nice for us. So one thing to note in this area, if you're level 70, these guys are a lot lower level than you. They will not attack unless they are provoked. So it makes life a lot easier and a lot, lot quicker when you're running around in this area. So there's one area, and right off the bat we got one of the branches. So right there, we just got about 9,000, well, at the 10%, we'll just call it 8,000 uh, Ash of Diamonds. So, a great way to save up for um, to get Astral Diamonds. Right now, if you have 30,000 guild marks, which I know seems like a lot, but believe me, you will get that faster than you can believe. 30,000 guild marks equates to anywhere from 500,000 diamonds all the way up to about 850,000 diamonds, just depending on the market at that particular time. So, great way to get Astral Diamonds. Pretty short video here. Um, actually, before we end this segment, one thing I do want to point out to you, and I'm not trying to persuade or push a vote any way, left or right, but just so it's, you know, people have a better understanding, can see this firsthand. We have a new boon structure coming up. Uh, a vote that's on our website right now. If you're not on the website, go to our website, take a, you know, take a look, and vote for your next boon structure. One of the options is the Explorer's Guild. If we build the Explorer's Guild, when I interact with this resource right here, or any of the Mastercraft resources, whether it's a skills check or, or out on any of these maps gathering these resources, you will get double the resources you find, meaning that 30,000 guild marks will now put you well over the 1 million Astral Diamond range. So, keep that in mind um, when you're voting to vote. Again, not trying to you know sway votes left or right, you might, I voted for the Explorers Guild, as you could probably guess. But I just want to make sure everyone has a clear understanding of what exactly this looks like and what some of these boon structures do in the background besides just granting uh, boons. Um, like we stated, we stated in a previous video, please research those boons yourself. 
Um, some of them offer additional bonuses, so go take a look at those before you place a vote. But this is what the Explorer's Guild boon will do, is it will give you two of these branches in this particular um, example right here. So let's move on to talking about the VIP and the enchanted key you get per day and how you can get AD off of that. Okay, in this section, we're going to look at how to get AD from being VIP. I feel like we're putting together a rhyme book here. So in order for this to work, you of course need to have the VIP. Uh, just rank one is all you need, because that gives you your one enchanted key per day. This is not a sh not the best way to farm AD or to make AD. This is more of a, oh hey, that was nice to get some spare AD type, type of thing, because there's no guaranteed drop or drop rate from the key itself. So if we go look at our VIP, come up here to the top left, click on the little VIP icon. So before we get into this real fast, if you haven't bought VIP, I get a lot of questions of, hey, I have 20 bucks, or I got 30 bucks, what should I buy? I would highly recommend getting VIP, even if it's just for this option right here, the traveling signpost. Anywhere you are in the world, in any area, you can drop this down and fast travel to any location. Huge, huge time saver. This is like a must-have. Um, in addition to that, you know, VIP gives you multiple other bonuses, including like the if you get to the rank 12, you have your banking, professions, a savage, a salvage anvil, mailbox. Um, you also get discounts on the wondrous bazaar. Uh, for here, you get 25% off all the time. Uh, you also get three epic dungeon keys per day, depending on what VIP rank you are. Again, not trying to sell VIP, but it's a good it's a good investment if you're looking to spend a few bucks. So we have our VIP rank open, our our window open here. I can either come click on claim per diem, or I can just open my inventory, and it will default to my VIP tab because it wants you to claim these prizes. So let's claim our two, our two rewards. We'll open this one. This one's gonna give you scrolls of identification and your three dungeon keys. Again, if you have that, the correct rank for that, it will. And this one's gonna contain your enchanted key. So one thing to note, that green bag we opened is account-based, meaning you can open it on every character on your account every single day. The purple one, can only be opened on one character. Luckily what comes out of the, the lock boxes are not bound, so you can ship things around or sell as you need to. So now I have my enchanted key. Let's open a lockbox. This right here is one of my favorite lockboxes to open, the Glorious Resurgence lockbox, because one, it gives the, the trade bar jackpot as an option at the bottom there, you see in green. But also, it doesn't specify, it, it's not specific on a legendary mount item. For example, look at the, the lockbox of the Magnificent Emporium. It's the Tensor's Floating Disc. That's the only thing you're able to get if you get the legendary, um, the legendary mount from here. With the Glorious Box, it gives you a legendary mount pack, where basically, this is legendary mount pack or legendary pack, it lets you pick one legendary item out of all the legendary items in the game. So again, one of my personal favorites, I've gotten a lot of, uh, it, it got a lot of, oh, what do you want to call them? Uh, greater marks of potency, superior marks of potency, a lot of refining items from here if you're not able, to, if you don't get the best drop. So again, just my personal preference. So let's open it up. And, okay, so I got 10 trade bars, not bad. And I got a mount pack. Well, let's take a look at that. So one thing a laundry and myself do with these is we'll either put these in the auction house or the guild bank for the guild rewards, or we'll open them and maybe get a better um, a better mount and put those up for sale. So right here, before we open it, let's go see how much this mount pack is going for. Twenty-nine thousand nine hundred. 
So I can sell this for about 29,000 AD, or I can take my luck and try to open it. So war of course, I'm gonna of course take my luck and see if I can't get something better out of that. Ah, uh, I should have sold it. <laughs> Story of my life right there, isn't it? So what we can do with that now is the exact same thing. We can go over here. We can take a look to see if these have any value to them. I set that to rare quality. And 2,000, so 1,000 AD. So I would have had better, uh, better AD income selling it off the auction house. But yeah, just wanted to show you what kind of how my mindset works, how what I'm looking at for these uh, for these boxes. And typically, I would just sell those boxes, but for the sake of the video, I wanted to open it so you can see, you know, just in case it was, was our lucky day, we got like the Infernal Nightmare, we could sell that off for quite a few hundred thousand AD. So that's how we're making a little bit of side income off of the VIP Enchanted Key each day. On average, I bring in probably around. Uh, probably about a hundred to three hundred thousand eighty a month off the VIP. Again, it all kind of depends on what your drop rate is and what you get at the lot box. That's what it all uh, relies upon. So again, not a sure way, not a guaranteed way, but a way nonetheless to bring in a little extra side income for you. That is all for this section. Let's move on to the next. Okay, in this section, we're going to talk about the invoking bonus. And I know it's very simple, and some of you might be asking why we're going to spend time on this. It's because there's a lot in this game. There's a lot to do, a lot of things that can be done to, like, um, to farm AD that we're talking about in this series. And it can be easy to forget the simple things in life. So I'm going to show you why invoking is, you know, it's, it's a good way to bring in some, some side AD. It's not the best way to farm. But again, it's free AD. So without it, as you see in the top left corner here of my character, I don't have any icon next to um, my glory booster. So if I were to refine or to salvage a ring, so let's open up our salvage anvil, and I have two plus rings, uh, two plus one rings here. So let's salvage this one. I'm gonna get 2,200 rough diamonds. And you can see in the bottom right, I just got 2,200 diamonds out of that. Okay, that's nice, you know, 2,200 diamonds. But what happens if I invoke is it's gonna give you a rough AD bonus. So let's try that again with our bonus up. So 2,200, same thing for the plus one ring, but this time I'm gonna get 25 uh, 30 out of it and that bonus does go up the more you evoke the more you save and of course the higher tier uh, items you restore so just out of two plus one rings I got just shy of 5,000 astral diamonds so again don't forget to evoke when you see your timer run out invoke because that bonus applies to uh, the dungeons and your, uh, your, your salvage items so again, short little section here on invoking. In the past, invoking gave straight astral diamonds. You invoke, you would give you X amount of diamonds. And if you did your invoking the entire day, I think it was about 10,000 diamonds it gave you. They since changed that, as you can see here, where it gives you a diamond bonus instead. So, and the reason they did that is it forces you to have to run dungeons, because that's where the rings are coming from, or your salvage, or salvage gear. If you're looking for a quick way to get uh, rings, I suggest coming out and taking a look at the Throne of the Dwarven Gods skirmish. This skirmish can be ran in less than about in less than 10 minutes. So a great way to get some some rings. You have a chance to get plus five rings here as well. Same thing with Prophecy of Madness, even though that one takes a little bit longer. So again, take a look at the Throne of the Dwarven Gods. All the dungeons drop can drop gear, but for a quick run. Throne is the place to look.
All right, in this section, we're going to talk about how to get AD from doing daily dungeons and skirmishes. This is also going to be kind of a short section. This is a pretty straightforward, um, a, a pretty straightforward topic. So every day, you can get um, uh, roughly about uh, anywhere from five to ten thousand astro diamonds running two dungeons and two skirmishes. To make this a quick run, I would recommend, and actually a few of the guild members we were talking about this too, for the quickest run, if we open up our queue window, not type in the chat there, open our queue window for the dungeons, uh, I'm going to be running, uh, let's see, sorry, not under dungeons, epic dungeons, uh, Kessel's Retreat and the Shores. These two dungeons do not require a key at the end. Um, there are two chests. One of them does take a key. I can't remember which key that is. The other one does not take a key, though. And opening that chest would give you an AD or Astro Diamond reward, uh, along with some other uh, miscellaneous items. For the skirmishes, you're looking at Throne of the Dwarven Gods and Prophecy of Madness. I don't recommend running Prophecy of Madness as that one is a tougher one to do and takes the most time. If you're looking to get kind of an in and out, I would run Throne of the Dwarven Gods twice, just back to back. Both times give you the AD bonus at the end without opening the chest. Uh, same thing with Prophecy of Madness, it does not require a key to get the Astral Diamond bonus. However, there is a chest in each one. They both take the lesser or greater demonic keys. Uh, if you're not able to make them, yeah, if you want to open the chest but you're not able to make those particular keys, there are what's called uh, Legendary Dragon Keys. And they can be found on the Zen store. And right here at the Legendary Dragon Keys, these can open any chest uh, in the game. So in case you don't have time or don't have that part available yet, you can always just buy him, buy him here. So again, doing two dungeons, two skirmishes a day will give you between five and 10,000 Astral Diamonds. Uh, in addition to that, whatever you get from these dungeons, typically you'll always get a ring or some kind of salvaging item that your course can salvage, obviously. That will bring you another, you know, five to 10,000. So you can easily get, you know, 10 to 20,000 astral diamonds just by doing these, you know, four, you know, two dungeons, two, two skirmishes each day. So, and don't forget, this ties right into your invoking bonus. Make sure you you invoke before you do any salvaging or you run the dungeons. Because at the end of the dungeons, if you do have an Astral Diamond bonus, you will get a bonus Astral Diamonds. Again, so a short topic on this one. If I miss anything, please let me know in the, in the comments below. Otherwise, let's move on to the next section. Hey everybody, in this section, we're going to talk about the Seals of the Protector and Seals of the Element, or Elements, whichever one it is. Give me also a pretty short section as this is really straightforward. So what we're looking for and what we're talking about are these seals right here. Seal of the Elements and Seal of the Protector. If you hover over them, you can see what dungeons these come from. So you, you see the seals of the elements drop from more dungeons than the seals of the protector do. If you're wondering, well, where do you find the dungeons at? If you open up the Q window by pressing K, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I know, but I don't think you actually want that on your Q button being with the QER as your typical rotation. Anyway, so we open our Q by pressing K. We come over, we can take a look at dungeons and epic dungeons, and this is where you're going to find where all those are listed at. So we can open this side by side and say, uh, take a look at the seals, I need to run Kessel's Retreat. Oh, there's Kessel's Retreat. And join the queue. You know, with our guild, more than likely somebody will, will run with you, so put it out in guild chat or the alliance chat, say, hey, I'm looking for people to run Kessel's Retreat, or you know, one for five for KR, as an example, for shorthand. So once you get enough seals of the elements and seals of the protector. You don't need, you know, there's not a set amount that you need. You're gonna come over here to Protector's Enclave, and we're gonna go to the seal trader. And he's right here. And 
we are going to buy, so we have elements and protectors. Each one takes its, its perspective uh, seal type. So elements, doesn't really matter which one you want to buy. I'll just buy two alliance coats. Get one of each. Protector I'll get, I can only get one coat. And I'll get a helmet. Next, if you have your VIP, uh, higher rank VIP, you can get your summon uh, salvage anvil now. Or we can come over to the summon of uh, the salvage anvil right here and protect this enclave. And you guessed it, we are just going to turn this into salvage for us. So before we do, I noticed that I have an evocation, or yeah, an evoke I can I can use to get bonus astral diamonds. So let's make sure you make sure you invoke first, get that bonus up there. So right now we got the 770, uh, 770 uh, bonus diamonds. So now we'll go in and find those art, um, items we just got. And I'm going to restore, I think, the higher level one first, or salvage it first. 6600 for 7920, thanks just to the invoking. And you can see my bonus is, is gone up here now. So I can either keep going with these, or I can just kind of save them and wait until I get more uh, invoked more often, or I'm able to get more uh, bonus AD saved up. It, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter that much. It's, you know, it's a couple thousand. It will add up over time, but my inventory space is more valuable. As you can see, I have a pretty full uh, inventory right now. So we're just going to salvage all of these off. And right there, we just got 20,000 diamonds doing that. You can ref And these are rough hash of diamonds, so to refine them, you can only refine 36,000 per day. But you can have yeah, as many as you want, you know, saved up. A, a trick here is, let's say we had 36,000 diamonds already, you know, already refined, and we still have, a, you know, we'll say we have five other items that we want to salvage. What you could do is you can send them to yourself in the mail or you can put them in your bank in your shared banking slots if you have an additional character on your account and go to the other character log in and grab those items and salvage them on that character then you can transfer your ad back and forth between character and just talking about that i'm going to show you how to do that because some people don't know how to do that and it's kind of a sneaky way to transfer AD back and forth. So if you go to the Zen Exchange, I'm going to type in, so let's say I want to transfer 500,000 uh, diamonds to another character. So I'm going to put in a low number that I know will not go through at all. So let's go 490. And I'm going to put in for, uh, let's do, I'm sorry, not 490 here, 490 over here. This will never go through anytime soon. And I'm going to work this up until I get to about the, the 500,000 mark. Now let's try. Oh, we'll just go with that. That's fine. Or we'll go a little higher. There. We'll go that way. So I'm going to post this. Now, if this goes through anyway, yeah, that's great. I would love to buy 1,020 Zen at 490 Astro Diamonds. That'd be a hell of a steal. So I'm going to post this. And you can see here it comes up in my listings, and these listings are account bound. So now, if I go to change character, now let's go to my paladin over here. Get away from the heroic encounter. I open up the Zen Exchange again, go to listings. Now watch how many diamonds I have here. I'm going to cancel this, go back to the main portion of the, the main front of the exchange, withdraw my balance, and now I have about a half a million more on this character. And that is how you transfer Ash diamonds from one character to the next. Little, uh, little side trip uh, trick we learned a while back. That is it for this segment. Got a little bonus with how to transfer 80 back and forth. Next up, we're going to be talking about um, profession items and what to make and how to flip them.
this section, we're going to talk about how to make AD by using your professions. There are certain items at, in your professions that can be crafted that are needed in the game to uh, restore certain things. For example, the one, uh, the, the primary one is the sea moving ice weapons. In order to restore them, you need multiple ingredients. One of them is called Biblothal. I'm going to show you that one. It's under the weaponsmithing profession. Type in just the portion of Biblothal here. And you see it right here. Now, as we talked about in one of the previous sections about how to farm lanolin, you do need 20 lanolin for this, along with some other fairly cheap ingredients. Now, the way you make AD off of this, this can go a couple different ways. You can either buy your lanolin that you need, or buy all the ingredients you need, and post this in the auction house and get a slight profit, or if you have more time, farm the lanolin. This comes up to about 420,000, call it 400,080 right here, if you were to farm this um, directly. And then about another uh, 30,000 AD worth of items. So to make one of these, it's going to cost us about 430,000 AD in resources. But if we go to the auction house and type in Biblothal, let's see, Biblothal. we can see them selling for about 560,000 AD. Minus, minus the 10% cut for the auction house, we're gonna pull in about 100,000 AD profit with this. And what we can do with that profit is we can turn back around, buy the resources we need again, or farm X amount of lanolin, buy the rest, because it can take some time to get 20 lanolin, and then basically rinse and repeat. And that's exactly how I did this. I made roughly two and a half million AD with this actual resource in the process, of, in, in the course of about a three week time period. What happened when I was doing it was they were selling for about 800,000 a piece and people started undercutting other people. So as you can see, there's only two of them on the market, which is a great, which is, a, which is perfect for this video because this kind of plays into the how to play the auction house um, video we made earlier. Whereas if I had the AD, I would buy these two Biblothals off the market for 560000 a piece, and then I would repost them for the original starting price of what it used to be back when Biblothal kind of first came out. I would repost these for about 750000 each. Kind of a gamble, because someone might say, no, I don't think so, and post theirs back for 560000 But it's a gamble I would take just to see what would happen, because you know, if they don't sell, or if, if I don't sell at the 750,000 mark, I can always repost them at the 560,000 mark. Again, I would take the 10% the cut, but, you know, call it 100,000 AD gamble to make quite a few hundred thousand AD could be worth worth the risk. So just another idea for you. Um, Bibithal is one of the better ones that I have found to, to make and sell. Again, if you were to farm straight lanolin, sell it, you would get 80 off of that. But if you farm it, save it, make uh, Biblothal, make some of the other profession items that are needed to restore the, the seeming ice weapons or the armor, you can get a little extra uh, bang for your buck. So, short little, short little video on this. Just wanted to clue you guys in, give you kind of the, something I have found that I was doing for quite a while. And seeing this auction house the way it is, might just get back into it. So that is it for this section. Let's move on to the next. Hey guys, just want to say a big thank you for tuning into this video, to this episode of The Tick. Alondria and myself were super excited to bring these tips and tricks to you on farming and earning astral diamonds and some tips on bringing in guild marks. We've worked really hard to put this video series together for you. We've had some great help from members in the guild and from uh, some of our other friends that we've met along the way. If you have any additional ideas, thoughts, or maybe a better way to do something, leave your feedback in the comments below this video so we can take a look at them and possibly make another video or possibly even attach it to this video. You never know what could happen. You might get your name in the credits, <laughs> which we don't have yet because it's just a laundry and myself right now. <laughs> so again, thanks for tuning into this episode of The Tick. 
Stay tuned. We have a lot more to come.